Hi, today I want to show you how you can use global variables inside of Toddle. And it is super simple. We're going to learn how to use global variables to reduce the amount of variables that you have inside of your components and your pages. But we're also going to use the set and get filter in order to facilitate all of that. So let's get right started. So I already have a form set up, but you know, normally what I would be doing is I would go to the inputs and I would bind it to the variables using bind to variable. But if we use global variables, we can't do that. So what I want to do is I want to first of all, go outside of the canvas here and click on variables and create a variable. I can call that variable form. And now I want to delete the initial value and I want to go to fx. And now in here, I can create the structure for my form. So I can go on plus and I can add an object. We want to add an object because an object is a data rep representation for one specific item containing multiple sub items. This is how a form works. You have one form with multiple input fields. So we add an object, we delete the ID, and now we can give this a key of name and we can just have an empty string in here you know, because that is the initial value. And we add another item in our object of date. And we can add another item of time. You would base this on your form items, right? Because inside of our form, we have name, date, time. So we have now in our global variable for the form, the object for name, date, time. And now that's it. So now it's not linked yet because if I type in hello as the name and I would look at the variable, it's still empty. So we need to link it. Now we can't go in here and click on bind to variable because if we would bind this to the variable, it would be binded to the whole form variable. And if I were to input something in here like, hey, the whole form variable is going to say, hey, and it's not having our structure which we don't want. So let's unbind this and let's just reload Toddle to clean up all the mess. Beautiful, so now it's reloaded. So what I want to do is I want to click on the input and I want to go to the event section. We want to look for the input event and we want to delete anything that we have on the input events if we have any on those input fields. So I want to go to the input field here and I want to go on input, on the input event, and on the input event, oh, where did it go? I want to go to input, and on the input event, I want to click on plus, and I want to go to variables, and I want to go to set the variable for form. But now, this is not what we want. We want to not have this being set based on the value, because then the whole variable would be reset it. So we actually need to base this on our variable. So I'm going to make an equation here, a custom formula in Toddle. I'm going to start with my variable, right? And then I'm going to click plus and I'm going to go to the set filter and the path here will be name because this is the name input field as you can see. So the name, I'm going to look at the path of name and the value of this will be the event target value. Event target value is the input. So if I'm going to type in, hey, inside of my input field, the event target value will contain the value that was inputted in the input field. And then the set filter is updating the object. So what is happening here is, if I would set the value here to hey, if I were to type in hey, the whole new variable value would be hey. But we want to keep our object structure in order to have it a global variable, right? So what we need to do is we need to go to the current initial structure, add a set filter, so we only target the name path, you know, like the name item inside our object, and then we manipulate the name item to contain the new inputted value. This is what we're going to do in here. I'm going to close this. So now, when I'm going to type in, 
hey, and I look at the variable, it's going to say hey. So this is perfect. But now we have it only one way because now when I up when I you know type something in here, the variable is being updated. But I also wanted to work that if I update the variable, the inputs should be changing. So what we need to do is and, and we can test it. What we can do is we can add a button that on click on this button will run a function similar to setting the input value just with a different value. So I can go on click and I could, you know, do the same formula in here. And oh, what the heck did I do? Okay, <laughs> maybe let's do this again. I could do a formula where I take the object that is the form variable and I add a set filter for name and the value would be test one, two, three, right? Because in this example, if I type my name in here as hey, and I look at the variable, it's going to say hey. But if I click on the button, it still says hey in the input, but the variable is saying test one, two, three. So it's not fully synced yet. So what we have to do as well is we have to go on the input field and we have to go to attributes and we have to go on the input field and add the attribute for value. And then I go on my FX and I click on plus, I base it on my form variable and I base it on the name path. Now it's fully linked because now as you can see, if I type in here, hey, the input is saying hey, the variable linked to the field, to the form field, is saying hell, hey as well. And when I click on the button, the variable is being updated to test one to three, and that change is being reflected as the new value of the form. And this is how you're going to make global variables. And then also we want to repeat the process um, for all the other input fields so that we can test it out. So we want to go to this input field here, and first of all, how about we go on the events on input and we copy this. So I go to the input here and I go on input, input. I paste this here and now I only have to go to the formula and change this name to date so that we target the date path inside our object, the date field basically, to then have it be the, the date is inputted in this specific input item. And then we can copy this as well and we can try it out. Let's add a date. Let's add uh, in a week. And we see the date has been added in our global variable. And then I can do the same thing with time. I go on input, I go on input, I paste it in here and I can then go in here and add time. And now would I add a time in here? I can add a time and as we see our variable will contain that time as well. And should the time be overwritten, this way it would still not do it because we still have to go to the attribute here on both of those and go to value, go on fx, go on the variable form, map it on the date part for the date input. So it's reflecting the change because we see there's no change reflected here. And we go on the input part and I go on the value and I go on the variables and I go on time. So now they show the information that is in the variable. So now this way, every time I input something, the variable is being updated. And every time the variable is being updated, the form input is being updated as well. So now we have a deep synchronization between our variable that will represent our form input and the form input represented to the user so that whatever the user inputs and each original state is always, you know, dynamically based on the variable. Very cool. So when I reload, now that data will be all wiped out. But what you could do is you could hard code some information. So for name, I can hard code no code, no code, pro code, just like that, inside of that object. Bec and because this object is linked to the input 
just like that, in the value variable that comes from our form variable name, this is going to be then reflected inside of the form. And for the date, I could also, for example, hard code something where I would type in 01, 01, 2025, for example. And as you can see, oops, it should, I think I may have the wrong format for that, to be quite honest. Let's see how the format should be. And then we can just copy that a little bit. Oh, it needs to be with minus, it's not with slash. It's so... I would have to go to my variable and update this to be with minuses. So minus, minus, and now that should be zero, 01, zero, 01. Let's reload, that's interesting. I think I'm just having the wrong format for the date. So let's input that and let's just copy actually one. Let's take tomorrow. Cut. Here we go. And let's see if we can get that working. Oh, it starts with the year first. So here we go, now it's working. And then we can go to time. Let's look at how the time format is. I can now go in here and copy that. And now I can also go to my variables and I would then have those form values preset if I want. If I not, I just leave it empty. But now when I reload, you would see the form initially would just load this dynamic data in the form because this global variable here is tied, you know, with its sub paths in here is tied on input of those items, those inputs, it's going to update the specific name path with a name value. And on the date path, it's, you know, on the date input, it's updating the date path with a new input, a date value. And it's doing the same thing for the time where on input, it's going to set the, you know, the time path of this form object to be the new time value. And then to reflect it back, we have, you know, here on the name input, we have the value set as form name. And on the time, on the date input, we have the value attribute set as form date. Uh, on the date input, we have it set as form date. And then on the time input, we have the value of that set as form time. So it's deeply synced. But in most of the cases, you want to have those empty. So you can just make them empty and they will then be automatically converted to an empty string. And then the user will be able to, we want to remove that, to input their information. So I would do no code pro code. And then I can take the date. Uh, here we go. Let's take tomorrow. And then we do uh, two thirty p.m. just like that. Now we have two thirty p.m. and we would look at our form variable and we have it all nicely organized in one object. And when I want to, you know, represent only a specific value here, let's, you know, I could just add a heading, for example, and I would now click in FX. And, or you can also do this, the same principle for API calls. I would go to my variable form and I would then select, let's say name. And now that works the same way and it's fully real time. So, you know, there is no delay in doing it like this for our, for your variables. So it's still as fast as it would be before. It just makes your whole app a little bit more organized if it makes sense. Now don't do like your whole page in one variable, that would not be best practices, but you get the idea. If you have those information in a form, making a global variable can help. Turning it into a component can help as well. But sometimes if you just have a form on your page, it may be easier to just, you know, not make it into a whole separate component because then if you turn everything into components, you, you, you know, state management gets a little bit more complex. You know, is it now light mode? Is it dark mode? We have to work with more attributes. It's supposed to be that way that every de React developer will tell you to build it that way. But in reality, 
It is not about how it's supposed to be built. It is what makes more sense for you right now and what is more understandable for you right now. So I encourage you, build things that you understand rather than building things that you don't understand just because an expert suggests that you to build it that way. Because that expert, you know, has their own knowledge, has their own experience, made their own mistakes. And if you just try to apply the principles that an expert recommends, you know, and you're just starting out, it doesn't make sense because the expert did the same things. And in fact, that expert became the expert by doing those mistakes, right? So it's very important. Um, don't do something that just sounds cool or sounds complex. Do what makes sense for you right now. You can always rebuild it later and you will always rebuild this. And the cool thing about no code is rebuilding is easier, simpler, and cheaper than never before. So use this for your benefit. Make all the mistakes you need to make right now. This is how you will be a better developer. And if you want to become a better developer, but maybe make a little bit less mistakes, I would highly recommend you to look into nocodeprocode.com. We have daily office hours. We have templates. We have courses in there to help you become a better total developer, solve your problems way faster with our daily office hours, and also get a better understanding of how to develop better applications inside of Toddle and also how to do the backend stuff inside of Xano, how to do API calls, how to work with AI. Right now, I think our main focus in there is just global variables and AI. You'll, you'll, you'll know what I, I'm talking about if you join the office hours because, um, you know, they're always, AI is always a big topic in there. So uh, if you need help with that, a lot of people have received great help with that so far. But thank you so much for watching. I would love to see you inside of the community. But regardless if you join or not, those videos are still here every day for you to help you. But if you want to get even more assistance hands-on and you want to get more content that is specifically targeted for things that we really can't talk about in that channel because they're not too broad that everybody benefits from, right? If you have very niche things or you just want that extra help or that community around you and that encouragement and to keep you accountable for making progress in your project, I would love to see you inside of the membership, inside of the community. Um, I'm here to help, but regardless of that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. I hope you're going to use a lot of global variables, but only where they really make sense. I hope this was very and beneficial for you and that it helped you tremendously. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.